Hello internet and welcome to another Cataclysm Guide. We're going to be talking about a specific NPC in the game. Unfortunately, you probably saw already, I tried to keep spoilers to a minimum in the titles and description, but there's only so much I can do. So if you're not interested in spoilers, this is your one and only warning right now uh, to step away and find things for yourself. So today we'll be discussing the Bone Seer. The Bone Seer is a special NPC that spawns in the game of Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. She also has her own quests and some unique items attached to her. So I thought we would go over this just to point out that she exists because uh, she's not super common and it's pretty unusual that you'll find her in your game. But it's pretty cool and it's certainly one of the more unique NPCs so I thought we would have a discussion about that. So first and foremost, she spawns in the four block cemetery. So this is the two by two cemetery that spawns. Looks like this, it's pretty straightforward. There is a church-like building in the corner and then there are many gravestones as well as a pull-in area. As far as I know, this is more or less how it looks every single time. And uh, the Bone Seer will spawn in that little church area. Now she has about a 20% chance to spawn when this area is is generated and there's usually only one or two of these in the entire overmap. So it's pretty unusual to find the large cemetery and then on top of that you have about a 20% chance that the Bone Seer will spawn. Pretty uncommon. Again, it's the four tile cemetery, whereas there are smaller cemeteries located around the map that are much more common. It has to be the four tile cemetery. These small cemeteries do not work. Additionally, there are, as far as I know, mass graves in the game. They don't count either. Uh, it really is just the four block cemetery. So even if you find bodies or gravestones, that doesn't mean you're in the right location. I couldn't actually get mass graves to spawn. I tried over and over and over to try and get mass graves to spawn to show you what that looks like for comparison. And I maybe they were removed from the game because I, I just could not find them, unfortunately. Now, as I said, she will spawn in this church-like building. And again, it's a 20% chance to spawn. So once you've found the bone seer, she is pretty unique looking. Um, generally, she looks exactly the same, but I noticed that sometimes when she spawned, she was not actually fitting the description that is given to her. I'm not sure what's going on with that. It may be a tile set issue. But once we find her, she's located in the cemetery's church building, and depending on monster density, she may no longer be there. When I found her in-game before, and there were monsters around, she would frequently break out the windows and go fight them. I don't know how this happens because the stained glass windows are not transparent. You can't see through them. So I'm not sure how she is getting into those situations. But there's a chance that she will be out beating zombie butt uh, when you arrive. So just keep your eyes peeled for that NPC marker on your map. And you'll hopefully find her. Now when we speak to her, she'll say, You there, quiet down. Can you hear it? The song? Uh, we immediately have the option of asking her to travel with us. She will decline and she will say that only those who bear my mark will prove themselves worthy of my skills. So unfortunately she's not recruitable immediately, but she is recruitable through a quest which is pretty simple and straightforward. If we ask her what she's talking about because she's talking about a song, she will tell us to listen carefully. The bones, they sing. Can you hear it? The song they weave? The stories they hold? Which is, uh... Pretty unique dialogue for an NPC. They're usually not quite this crazy. And we can say, what? Singing bones? What are you talking about? Uh, or, of course, we always have the option to disregard what she said and just kind of, you know, oh, you're crazy, I'll leave you alone. We're not going to be exploring those options, obviously, because they just boot you out of the chat menu. So I ask her what she's talking about. Oh, when it all happened, the cataclysm, something changed. You can see it in all creatures, but most of all in their bones. They break, morph, rise again in an infinite cycle. Living dead walk, monsters rip and tear each other apart. You can see the resonance, the quiet hum of raw strength. And only by taking the bones does the cycle end. Their story, their song, their strength becomes yours to use. Which again, sounds pretty bonkers and is some of the most unique NPC dialogue in the game. This will open up two different chat options. We will be able to ask her what she does with the bones, but we're going to ask her first. Uh, I'm not really sure what you mean about songs or strength. This uh, NPC also is one of the most verbose that I've met in the game. She likes to talk and she has quite a lot of dialogue. So we'll ask her, we'll tell her we don't understand about songs and she'll say, only when you crush the bones of a body does it cease to rise. Only if you examine the bones can you see what it was. Thus is the story. 
Whatever causes this change is alive, moving within us all, an inevitable part of this new world. It holds the power of change. When we hold the bones, we hold the power, thus the strength. Together they form a beautiful song. Which is pretty interesting because it's referencing the fact that we have to pulp enemies to prevent them from rising. So crushing the bones of an enemy does in fact prevent them from rising again. And she even hints that there's something in us as survivors that is making all of this happen across the cataclysm. So it's really interesting dialogue. Uh, here we can tell her, I think I understand what you mean, although I'm not sure if I agree with you. This is roughly the same dialogue we saw before, so I'm not super thrilled about that, but what are you going to do? So next we'll ask her, what do you actually do with the bones? And she'll tell us that the song can be weaved in many forms. Carved bone charms, weapons, and armor all hold immense power, and when the time comes, me and my kindred shall gather a great amount of song and sing it to restore this world. Restore it or end it, it makes no difference. And we'll ask her, end the world? What? We believe that enough power in one song could revert the cataclysm or accelerate it to a time beyond all, ending it all the same. But with the world looking as it is, both options are preferable. So again, sounds like a member of a cult. She's specifically talking about uh, other people like her. So it seems to me that this is uh, hinting at a cult. We can say it sounds somewhat doomsday-ish, uh, but I suppose it's a belief like any other belief. Still, at least you have a goal to help the world one way or the other. To which she will respond, Your mind is open more than most. Perhaps one day you two will feel the power of the song and become kindred. For now, Acolyte, listen, listen, and feel the song. And we'll just say, hey, thanks, crazy lady. That's, that's nice. We are free to trade with her. This is something I meant to mention earlier. She has some unique items, which we'll look at in more detail later, which you can freely trade her for, although I don't necessarily see a need to that. She doesn't have very much on offer. And now if we ask her if we can help her with her song, she will tell us, a song may yet be sung by you should you wish to. And we'll say, okay, I'm listening. What do you have? She'll say, if you wish to be set on the path to enlightenment, First, you must learn to listen and hear the song. So go out, butcher a creature, and feel the power between your fingertips. Then bring me the bones, and I shall carve them for you. And we just say, I guess I need to see how this is going to work out. I'll do it. So pretty easy as far as things go. She will say, excellent, now be on your way. And we will receive a quest to retrieve eight bones for the bone seer. Uh, the mission description is actually pretty basic in this. I do wish they would do a little bit more work to dress this up and make it sound a little bit better because it essentially just says, go get eight bones, uh, which is not super exciting. They could add some of the lore here just to flesh out this uh, screen a little bit, but we'll go out and we'll retrieve some bones. Now, I basically was cheating at this point. I just spawned a deer and blasted it, uh, which did provide enough bones. It's important to note, she, she references, if you press her for advice, she will reference that you need to collect non-zombie, non-monster bones, specifically just the bones of regular creatures. So anything, you know, you go to a farm and clear out some cows or sheep or something, uh, you go out hunting for dog or whatever during your, your next outing, just gather up the bones. You may even have some bones in your base. It does not specify any kind of recently killed creature or anything like that. It's just the bones. So we need to get eight bones for Brigitte LaCroix, to which, you know, we will head back and hand them to her. And she will ask us, have you felt the song in your hands yes, yet? And we will say, yes, of course. Here are some bones. And she says, and so another cycle ends. You have done well. I will now bestow my mark upon you so that others may know your path you walk, the path you walk, and aid you. Um, we can also ask her for payment. She will offer to teach us something or to give us some items. If you ask her to teach you something, it'll open like a training skill menu. So if you're looking to get skills out of her, you can do that. Uh, unfortunately, her skills are not really super impressive, so it's not much that she would be able to teach us, so I wouldn't recommend that. Additionally, she does offer you some items uh, as a reward for completing the mission. If we choose that option, it will take us into the trade menu, where you will see in the upper right corner, we have a trade credit of $100. So essentially, for bringing her eight bones, we've been given a $100 trade credit. Now again, she doesn't have anything super, super useful uh, or that interesting, really. It's mostly about flavor. So you'll see she has a bone flute, a large wolf skull, occult bone armor, 
and a pair of occult boots. Now these are the unique items that she has. Everything else is pretty standard loot that you could get anywhere, so I picked up those particular items, all of which the total came to be less than the $100 credit. So using this, you can get all the unique items from her. So if we take a look at these items individually, we'll start with the large wolf skull. This is the top part of an unusually large wolf skull, equipped with leather straps to secure it on your head. Every inch of it has been carved with a maze of fine intertwined symbols that make your eyes water. So pretty interesting as far as things go. Where did she get this? Where did she find a, such a large wolf skull? Why has it been carved with these things? And it's very interesting because of course she's the bone seer who has a lot to do with bones. Now as an item, this is actually not very good. Um, the encumbrance on this is quite high, which is not really an issue on your head, but the protection that it offers is quite low. So I don't know that this is something truly exceptional, but this is a very easy quest that you could do on day one if you found this character. So if you're on day one or an early game character, this is a pretty good helmet. I mean, it's fine. It's better than nothing, uh, which is most likely what you'll have. It's better than a cotton cap or something like that. This particular character has an army helmet, and I did compare them side by side just to illustrate how much worse the wolf skull is. So this is not something that a mid to late game character will want to wear. Obviously, you will want to wear something like an army helmet that has pretty bonkers protection values. Now, on the plus side, the coverage is 85%. Certain helmet pieces are not quite that high, so it is better in that regard. But again, with the army helmet, the army helmet is basically better in every conceivable way. So not something I will be wearing, but good if you're an early game character. Next, we'll take a look at the occult bone armor. It is a black jacket made from thick leather and covered with intricately carved bones. You've never seen patterns like those before. Each time you look at them, you spot a new one as if they were changing on their own. Again, not a super amazing piece of armor. It is basically on par with leather jackets or something like that. You'll see it covers the torso, the arms, and it has 85% coverage, pretty good warmth, um, and an okay encumbrance. It's 11 and it fits, so it is what it is. That's pretty acceptable. And then finally, the values of protection are on par with something like leather. I mean, they're not amazing obviously you know if we found any of the kevlar vests or anything like that they're considerably better but if you're in the early game this is certainly something that you could wear for a while without too much issue having 30 warmth is good in a cold environment but in something like summertime that would be uh pretty unbearable and the encumbrance as i said is is pretty pretty average but it's not you know, something that would prevent you from wearing this. Obviously, the main draw of wearing these items is the fact that they are cool and unique, and nothing like them exists anywhere else in the game. So, nothing truly exceptional. Next, we look at the pair of occult boots. These are leather boots covered with tiny, finely carved bones. With each step, the bones collide with each other, producing a strange song. So again, very flavorful, very interesting piece of equipment, but ultimately is not that not that amazing from a actual protection standpoint. They go on the feet, of course. They have six bash, eight cut, and five ballistic protection. I never really pay a lot of attention to footwear in the game, so I don't even know if this is good or bad. It, I would imagine this is on par with like a pair of hiking boots, so nothing really exceptional. You would think that a lot of these things with bone would add some additional protection, but it seems like Mostly they're just, again, for flavor and role play. She also had a bone flute on her. I don't think that's worth talking about. It's a pretty standard uh, item. It's just, uh, again, to flesh out her character a little bit more. So let's return to Brigitte and see what else she has to say. We have a few options here. We have the, you mentioned some cycle before when I gave you the bones. What does that mean? So if we ask her that, she will provide us with more flavor. She will say, it's not just walking horrors and monsters that have changed with the cataclysm, it started a cycle of sorts. Everything repeats. We can only see it in others, but it happens to us, even you and I. How many times have you fallen, your flesh rent from your body devoured, or perhaps it was the quiet whimper of death to exposure, but your bones rose again, different flesh, different name, sometimes even different knowledge, but the bones, they're the same. We are all trapped in the same cycle we just keep forgetting. That's why we need to amass the song. That's why it has to end even if it means the destruction, not restoration. It's really interesting because, again, 
This is hinting at like some meta things. So here she's saying, how many characters have you as the player had where, yeah, you had different names, you had different skills, you had different everything, but it was the same bones. The foundation was the same. So it's pretty interesting meta fourth wall type stuff going on. And I think this is this is why I really like this character. It's all very peculiar and culty and you can say it's weird and whatever, but nothing like this exists anywhere else in Cataclysm. And I think it's super fascinating. We can then say, uh, that's, that's a hell of a belief, but if it helps you deal with the world, who am I to argue? And she'll just say acolyte, which is what she refers to us as. We also have the option to ask her if there's any way we can continue helping with her song. She'll tell us that the song is quiet for now. Perhaps with time, some more notes will be etched in the bones of this world. So no other quests. It is just that single quest. And we also have the option of trying to recruit her. We can say, would you like to join me on my travels? And she will say, you bear my mark, meaning I believe you have the potential to learn to truly listen to the song. Yes, I will lend you my skills for now. So because we've completed that quest, she gave us her mark, quote unquote. And now because we have her mark, she's willing to travel with us. And then she converts to a pretty basic NPC. Um, she's not really exceptional. The fact that she starts with a war flail can be pretty handy if you're just trying to clear areas. Uh, like I said, the cemeteries are often pretty heavy monster density and stuff. Other than that, she's uh, pretty basic as far as an NPC goes. I couldn't notice anything special about her. Um, it just converts her to your standard NPC. And if you know me at all, you probably know I'm not a big fan of NPCs. So, I don't know. I think that the reason you would do this is less about recruiting an NPC, although it is an easy way to get an NPC. If you find her, she's one of the easiest to recruit because it's a very simple mission and you probably, by the time you find her, you probably already have some bones laying around anyway. Uh, but the main reason to talk to this NPC is because she's so freaking interesting. She's so unique. Again, nothing like this exists anywhere else in Cataclysm and I find it deeply fascinating and I think it hints that there are more people like her that potentially could be added to the game later on and that there could be more of an expansive quest connected to her. So I think that that's pretty interesting and it makes me excited for the potential of things to come. And I just uh, really wanted to spotlight this NPC because it's so unique and interesting. So unfortunately, I think that's a wrap on the Bone Seer. I don't think there's anything else really to do about it. Uh, or to talk about. So I think that that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, maybe click that like button. It's the best thing you can do to help put my videos out there for more people to see. Share share with people. If you uh, enjoyed my series or anything on the channel, why not give a shout out to a friend that might like the videos. Other than that, that's it. I'll be back with something new and interesting in the near future, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.